Okay, here we are back with the final coding section for Precision for part 13. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's bring up Visual Studio and let's see what we need to hit first. All right, first thing we need to do is implement that time control system. So let's go ahead and jump over into Actor and create ourselves a couple of static members. We've All got right. one static field and one static property. All right, so let me go up to the, uh, the fields for Actor and jump in right below the scale section. I'm going to call this uh, time scale. So what we want to do is set up that actual time scale field, which is going to be a private uh, static float called time scale, which we will set to a value of 1. So we'll make sure that we initialize that right off the bat as soon as the field is defined. Right. Now we've got a property to go ahead and set up. All right, so we need a property to act as an accessor to that field. So I'll extend the or expand the properties region. And I'm actually going to steal the scale property since it's very similar. It's a property or a float accessor property. And that way I don't have to change too much of the uh, attributes about it. I can just change the name to uh, time scale. And we need to make sure it's static as well to match our field. That is true. This does need to be changed over to static. Which means we'll need to drop all the thises. And change it to time scale, time scale. Perfect. And that should be good. So I'm going to build, make sure that everything's working. And okay. though I do believe there's a few more things we need to do in Actor. To there are, definitely. What we need to do next is go ahead and focus on adjusting our scale and scale time values by multiplying that scale time into it. Right. So we're going to turn right around now and start using the scale time or time scale property to adjust how fast Actors actually work. Yeah, I believe I just said scale time. I said it in reverse. We're dealing with scale time and time scale, so yeah, that's, that's a tongue twister. Right. But um, going down to update inside of Actor, we have the uh, scaling section where we have the actual scale calculation, which we need to take and multiply by time scale. Now, of course, that affects how much is scaled, so we need to affect the time that the scale itself actually takes. So we'll multiply scale time against time scale. Because you need these two to stay in sync. Right. Okay. That... Finishes actor. So now we need to go ahead and move on over to enemy. So bringing up the enemy class, now we've got that time scale, and we're going to use that to apply to the amount that the enemy moves. So inside of enemy, I'm going to jump down to the update method, and here we have the calculation for the amount. So I'm just going to jump to the very end of that and multiply it by time scale. Of course, we're still inside an actor, so I don't have to address it through actor dot time scale. Right. Since an enemy is in essence an actor. Okay, so now we can go ahead and move over to cell, where we have that life percent calculation. And here we are already in update inside of the cell, where life percent is being decremented. I'll jump to the very end of that line and multiply this by time scale as well. Excellent. So build and everything everything's good. Up. So right now we can let's just go ahead and run and make sure that everything's running at normal speed. So if we move around, everything looks right. We've taken out the level of advance code momentarily, yeah. but, I mean, the speed, everything seems right. Okay. So now let's go ahead and see if we can start temporarily affecting the speed before we shift our focus over to the new time power-up class. Right. Let's test this time scalability and make sure it works properly. So what I'll do is go back to the game class and then jump down to begin level. And then inside of begin level, we could go and set the actor's time scale. And let's begin with a value of maybe 0.3 and see if this it does indeed slow the game down. Okay. And this, yeah, the scale is definitely slower. And it's taking longer to die. Yeah, everything's taking longer to die. Any enemies moving around move more slowly. Yeah. Now, you will note that the player moves at normal speed, but that's the whole point of this power-up, right. is that the player remains unaffected. That's right. That's also why we've set up a system where, while, yes, we do have to go individually through different types of actors and make sure that they respect time scale, but that individual control is what allows us to not apply it to the player. Mm -hmm. All right, very nice. Now, let's, let's show them that we can go the other way as well. Let's go up to uh, triple speed. And yes. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, things are definitely faster. So now set it up to something like 30. Let's try 10. Yeah, 10 should be pretty fast. <laughs> They're not even going to be picking all this up. It's just going to be jumping all over the place. That's great. Okay, so time scale is definitely working. We're now able to control the speed of the game. So now we can turn our attention over to the time power-up basically the extension to the power-up class, 
and we can implement this class where it's going to control the actor's time scale. So let me first uh, begin by taking out the temporary test line, and then we can turn our attention over to the time power up class itself. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the classes folder, add a new item, and we'll create the time power up class. Now with this class, we'll do the standard cleanup. We'll take the uh, class's sub namespace out. And then we'll look at uh, time power up and make sure that it extends power up. And while we're in here, we can also clean up the, uh, some of the namespace using statements. And I believe we will need the graphics. We will. Uh, XNA framework graphics. So let me steal that from the most con convenient nearby class. So I'll steal this last line, XNA, Microsoft XNA framework graphics, and put that into place. Okay. So now we can look at um, fleshing in the, the time power class itself. And to begin with that, I think it's we need to take a look at the... Uh, I think we jump back over field. to game real quick and add that one field in that we're going to be using. Oh, right. We need, okay, yeah, we need the slowdown pers or number to come from That's somewhere. That's right. And that will actually come from game. So we can scroll back up to the top. We still have our time power up section. So what I'll do is jump into that section. And I'll add in one more constant. This is going to be a float called time power up. Slow down um, percent? No, just slow down. And we'll set that to a value of 0.1. Okay. So we have a 10% a speed that activates because of the time power up. Okay. So now let's go ahead and jump back over to time power up and start flushing that out. We'll start with fields. First one we need to do is the uh, slow down percent field. All right. This will be a private float called slow down percent. All right, and now we need to set up a uh, property to act as an accessor to that field. So I'll make a public float called slowdown percent. Okay. And let's see, set up the get to return the slowdown percent. Set up the set accessor to set the slowdown percent to the given value. Nice. All right, so now let's go ahead and get methods in place, starting with the constructor. All right, let's put in public constructor for time power up. And let's take in both a texture 2D called texture and a color called time bar color. And then um, make the, uh, the call to the base constructor and feed it both the texture and that time bar color. Because if you remember... Um, the, uh, the power-up itself takes in a time bar color, so we need to make sure we pass that along. Right. Okay. Now let's go ahead and implement the protected override activate. And let me erase that uh, terminator that I yeah. should have put on the end of the constructor. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. First override. This will be protected override for activate. So I'll drop that in place. But I'm going to erase the, uh, the call to base. Since we know it is, doesn't do anything. Yeah, there's nothing in there. And if you won't, I mean, th these are such short ones, uh, one-liners, more or less. Let's go ahead and just put in the call to actor.timescale and set it to the slowdown percent. All right, because this is what's going to get run when this time power-up gets activated. What is it supposed to do? It's supposed to slow the game down. Sure. How do we do that? With our new timescale property. So from here, we can do um, actor.timescale equals our slowdown percent. Okay. And that's it. And then uh, let's go ahead and create the protected override deactivate. So protected override deactivate, no call to base, and instead we set the time scale back to normal or a value of one. So set the actor time scale to one. Okay. Now that's it. Here we're done. So let's go ahead and turn our attention back over to begin level. I will build really quickly. Yeah, make, make sure, sure all no this goes. And uh, now we can turn our attention back to game where I'm going to jump back down to the begin level method. And we start by changing that power up, yeah. We'll change this to a time power up and make sure that we're actually spawning a time power up. Okay. Then when we're done setting uh, properties, we need to make sure we turn around and set the time power ups slowdown percent to the time power up slowdown value. Okay. And there you go. Congratulations. With the exception of getting the bug fixed, that's it. So we can go ahead and test. All right, so let's load up the game, wait for the power-up to spawn, and 
Slow. Check it out. Everything slows down, slows down, runs out, and speed returns to normal. Or again, everything's slow. I can still move fast, but now all the enemies move slow. So let's go ahead and put our level changing code back in place and start going across levels and see if we can show them the problem. All right, so back up to update. Here we are in the playing state, and I'll uncomment the level change code. And let me see if I can trigger this problem. The problem is going to be what would happen if we were still in a slow state and we happened to change levels. So let me see if I can time the pickup of the uh, power-up just right. I'll wait for that last cell to be almost dead, let it run out, and we change levels. So what happens now? If we press A, slow. everything is slow, even though the time power-up's not activated. So absolutely everything is running at 10% speed, and it shouldn't be. Right. What happened was we cleared all the actors out so the old time power-up went away, but actor was never reset to a default speed. That means if actor happens, or if the time scale happens to be set to slow, and we change levels, it's just stuck there. Right. Very easy fix. But all that means is, well, we can set the time scale to be a default value of 1 when we're inside begin level. So I guess we could almost jump all the way up to the top and say that. Yeah, first thing, make the game play at regular speed. So always reset the time scale to 1, and then we shouldn't have that problem. Okay. Let me see if I can re-trigger it closely enough again to see what's happening. So waiting for that cell to almost die. And who's going to beat, who's going to beat, who's going to... Oh! Let's try again. <laughs> the problem is I managed to save the cell, so I got that additional scale time. So waiting, waiting, waiting. Not, not fast enough. Yeah, it, it's challenging, guys, to pull this off. Logan can do it. Because it slows to. the cells down so much that you really don't have... Well, that's not fair because yeah, of the time power-ups spawn on top of the cell, so it would have been <laughs> impossible to save them independently. All right, last time. Here it goes. And got it. Level change. So... Do we begin at normal speed? Yep. We do. Everything begins at normal speed well, until I hit the power up. Right? Yeah. Everything, Everything works right. normally now. Nice. So there you go. That's it. That is precision in its complete form, complete with time power up. So all that remains is any testing, and there, there's no videos that we're going to do for that. We're simply going to test it ourselves. If we stumble on anything, we'll come back and show what we find. Uh, though we're not done yet, we do want to show you how all of the sprite graphics are put together. So what we'll be doing is bringing in our resident graphic artist, Mr. Zach Parrish, starting in the next video. And he is going to walk through creating all of our sprites that we're going to be using. Though, Logan, we're going to keep things easy for him. We're simply going to tell him that we want all of our graphics, with the exception of the background, as 64 by 64. We're going to tell them to go ahead and make sure that the cell is a grayscale uh, color for us, since we know we're going to need that. He doesn't need to spend any time working on colors. And uh, just give us everything at 64 by 64, because we don't want him having to worry about cropping everything. We'll take care of that ourselves. So we'll take everything he does, we'll come back in and clean it up and drop the new graphics in, make sure everything works well. But it'll at least show everyone out there who's watching these videos uh, what we did to go about getting these graphics created. And besides, we want to keep things easy when we ask our artists to do that. We don't want to get things too technical, okay? We're just going to say, look, save these 64 by 64 images out as PNGs, and we'll go from there. So that's going to wrap up this video, and in the next video, if there are no bugs found in the code, we will go ahead and proceed with graphics. Thanks a lot, guys.